All right, it's day two of our Venice adventure. Jeff and I are heading to an entirely different area today. Gonna try and flip for more bass. Hopefully run across some flounder too. The flounder fishing down here in Venice has been ridiculous. We didn't catch any yesterday. We, re we really didn't try for them, but we know some guys who've been catching them just flipping for bass. So we can see if we can run across some of those today. Perfect conditions. I mean, it is dead slick. Look at this, how nice. Can't wait to get out there. All right, so back to flipping. Now, the morning has a high tide right now, so we're right at the end of the rise. Not exactly ideal, but we caught some fish yesterday on the rise, and we're optimistic. Water looks really, really good. I'm once again throwing this cobalt matrix craw. What you throwing, Jeff? I'm throwing the speed craw blue. One, speed sapphire. craw, sapphire blue. You love that color, huh? Come to South Louisiana, don't, don't um, throw anything else. You'll catch fish everywhere with this color. See, there's no... They can't get away from us. Anymore. Yeah, right. It's a really good, good bank. Yeah, we're gonna catch a few somewhere in here. Get him, Jeff. Oh, juvenile. Look at that redfish. Uh, at least we're catching a few of them. Catching a few baby reds. We caught some yesterday. That's good. None flipping. We caught them on a line of rocks. But typically, you'll catch reds and flounders and bass flipping. Sometimes they have stuck with trout. Sometimes a flounder. It's never. You never know what you're gonna get down here in the delta. There he is. There he is. All right. Good bass. With a face full of grass. I felt him take it. Fishy? Grimmy. I don't know. Maybe crab. Something moved right there, Todd. You see that? I didn't see it. Yep. Hey, you got him. You called it, Jeff. He gave himself away. Yep. Good fish. But you just think of how many times you're like, is that a fish? Is it not a fish? And you set the hook and it's a fish. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What in the world? Oh goodness. What was that? He ate my lunch. As a fish. Yeah, as a fish. Renner? <laughs> Crab? I don't know, man. I'm just, just running. Like you said, he's just running to the side. I don't know if it's a stick or what. It was moving, definitely moving out. Yeah. Uh, there he is. It was a bass, Jeff. He was playing with it. <laughs> Man. So I threw in there, definitely missed a fish. Jeff threw in there, missed a fish. <laughs> I put a new bait on because I lost my bait. I threw right back in the same spot and caught this guy. Yeah, what you can see here is you see the current coming by hard on the edge, but up underneath all this stuff, it provides shade, provides some protection from the current. So anytime you see any lay down canes like that, you need to punch in into them. Don't fish the edge, just go straight into the middle of them. Because a lot of times that's where the bass is sitting. He's sitting up under that protection, looking out at where this current's coming by and something shrimp comes by or a minnow, he just pops out and gets it. And that's especially true in the summer, right? They're gonna get up in that shade. Huh? Right, it provides shade, Cooler water, protection from the current, protection from birds overhead. It's just an ideal setup when you fish in these canes. It is amazing. Like sometimes they hit it and sit and just sit where, where they hit it. And other times they take off like bats out of hell. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, you, you, like you're looking at your line and you set the hook and your, your bait was out here. Yeah. Like how's that even happen? Clock, 7.30, we'll head back to the launch. That sounds good. Air there he is. <laughs> uh huh. Good thing with this braid, you can just you can just cross their eyes on that hook set. All right. So, what percentage of the bass you catch at Venice would you say are slam dunk, no doubt about it, bites compared to? I think it might be a bite. 
so I'm setting the hook. It's funny, it depends on the day. I've been down here where 90% of them, I didn't know it was a fish. I just, like, I got to set the hook. Right. I think something's there. I'm either hung up on something or something's got it. Just feel a little pressure, something different. And I've had days where 90, and you miss a lot of fish like those days. But then I've seen some days when you're in the right part of the tide that as soon as it goes down, you line you know, Okay. Like this hot summertime, 50% of the time, you're not really going to feel the bite. You're just going to pull back and feel pressure. Yeah. You know, one of the things I try to tell people that I bring and come down here and fish is try to set the hook up, mm -hmm. straight up. If you think you got a fish, because one, you take up the line a lot faster, and two, if you can get him hooked in that bony part of the mouth, he won't come off. It's okay. Easy. So just a good straight hook set, straight up. Like, like that. that. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, you got to, because sometimes you'll bring this thing up to the top of the cane, and some brim will run up there and tattoo it, and it feels just like a bass bite. And I've had times down here where I miss one, and it flops over and hangs on another cane, and I see, actually see the fish come up and eat it off the cane. Right. And some days you'll actually see the canes move, you know, you'll actually, they've acted pretty active in there. Well, you, that happened to you once today, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can go 30 miles in one direction and fish a million spots. So it just tells you that you got to kind of figure the pattern and figure what the fish are doing. And, you know, when the fall... There he is. <laughs> You was bird dogging that one. I was bird dogging. Good. Is it a fish? Is it not a fish? Is it a fish? Is it not a fish? It was a fish. Sorry to interrupt your thought there, Jeff. But it's just, this place is so massive. You got three passes, south, southwest, southeast pass, and everything down there has rows of canes like this, miles that you can fish. So it, it takes a while for you to find some areas that have a lot of concentration of fish. Beautiful. You know, and the good news, if you come down here and, you know, you're inexperienced with bass fishing down here, there's a whole lot of other options. You could spend half a day bass fishing. It's not working out for you. Yesterday, Jeff and I targeted catfish and absolutely blistered them, freshwater cats. We finished the day throwing crankbaits and catching freshwater cats almost every cast. SB57s, some beautiful fish and heavy current. They felt like 30 pounders. Also, you've got redfish down here, although the redfish population really is not the best this year. The flounder population is incredible this year. People have been catching them like mad. Now, Jeff and I have not caught any on this trip, but a friend of ours who was down here caught three yesterday just doing this, just flipping for bass. And we've gotten lots of reports of people just whacking the flounder. In fact, we met two guys this morning at Adam's Grocery. They told Jeff what they caught 40 or something yesterday. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too. You could come down here and get a guide and go out and catch snapper and offshore fish one day. You'd go out and catch bull reds another day and then come in and fish in source species another day. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell everybody if you're coming down here, bring an ice chest and go buy you some shrimp at one of these shrimp houses. Right. And take you home an ice chest full of shrimp. Yeah, Venice is truly a paradise, particularly when this river gets down. And it is super low this year, and it shows no sign of having a significant rise. And the fishing down here is just going to explode as temperatures cool. September, October, November should be just fantastic, really for everything. Ooh. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> nice! <laughs> I literally saw that fish hit. Let you settle down. <laughs> oh, goodness. I just had a car in my eye. I just seen the whole mat just blow up. The leader doesn't matter, does it? Mm, obviously not. So if you didn't see the video we shot yesterday, you know, I'm a big believer in fishing with a fluoro leader. And the one I had yesterday was just too light. And, you know, your, your line takes just such, so much abuse. You can tell. I mean, you're constantly doing like Jeff just did, snagging a cane and ripping it out. And it just constantly getting nicked. And, Anyway, I, I set the hook on a fish and uh, it broke instantly. The fish went crazy trying to throw the, the lure that was in its mouth. But Jeff advised me to just ditch the leader and uh, go straight braid, which I really never, ever, ever do. But it really hasn't made a difference at all. And the good thing with that, really, you have no hesitation in your hook set. When <clears throat> you know you're straight braid, you know you're not going to break, you can just really set hard. Oh, get him, Jeff. Get him, Jeff. That's a good bass. I've seen the that's a good move. bass. There you go. That's a good fish. Move. Yeah, that's nice. Did you feel him thump it or was he just there? No, well, I seen it. The little cane was moving and I flipped it in there. And when I tightened my line, he took off. Okay. They're so freaking fat. Venice bass just look different. Yeah. 
knew he was. Way in there, huh? There he is. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, that's part of it. Man. That's part of it. Couldn't get him through the cane. That fish was in prison. Yeah, that's what mine was, too. Yeah. It's like, how do you get, it's like a jailbreak to get him out. Gorgeous stuff. Yeah, no doubt. It's like, well, how could there not be fish here? I've seen so many things. It's like, okay, there's got to be one here. Nope. Get him, Jeff. There he is. You were just saying. Where were they? It looked too good not to have fish. Outlet stores down there in Orange Beach. That's up there. There he is. All right. <laughs> Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Love it. All the pretty stuff we fished yesterday. It's amazing. I mean, it's not like we're killing them today, but it's way better than yesterday. Oh, ho, ho, ho. speaking of bird dogging. <laughs> yeah. Well, I seen something move. I thought it might have been my line moved the cane, but then it was the... Uh, it was the bass. It was the bass moving the cane. Pretty fish. Yeah. All right, as I mentioned, the flounder fishing has been great here lately, so Jeff and I are going to try and catch a flounder. I've got a Clear Conscience Pro's Choice soft stick bait tied up. Jeff's throwing a major shad. And you definitely want a tip with shrimp to catch flounder. You can certainly catch them without it, but it helps. Got a little shrimp on there. No, she's not dragging. Oh, you saw that? A <laughs> big old monster crab. I mean a monster. Bit my tail off. You got that shrimp creole somewhere? That's right behind me. I don't know if it was a pinfish or brim. Something chases me to boat every time. I wonder if we should be throwing gulp. You got gulp? Yeah, I got gulp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pinfish? It's pinfish or brim. Look, doink, doink. Look, look. Lady. Ladyfish, that's what it is. Oh, goody. I'm gonna try a gulp. Where are you, gulps? Like that. There he is. I think that's one, Todd. Oh, Jeff. There we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good job. Perfect. He thumped it just like he's supposed to. Here, let me get a picture. All right. Yeah, it's always nice to call you shot with flounder. Well, I'd say all things considered, we had a pretty successful trip. I mean, I'm fishing yesterday morning. What you got, Jeff? Got me a flounder. No way. Yeah. You got another one? Yeah. You sure do. Yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Gotta have that big old chunk of shrimp on it. Yep. There we go. I'm being stubborn, not fishing the shrimp. Yep. Jeff, on the other hand, is not being stubborn, and therefore he's catching flounder. Pretty flounder, man. Yep. It's yeah, a good bro. fish. So, Jeff, what, uh, you feel like your, your outfit here is important to, to floundering, huh? Right. I'm just using like a quarter, three-eighths ounce, any kind of jig, just a matrix shad. You can use gulp, but the, the main thing is just put you a big old chunk of shrimp because you're kind of just dragging it on the bottom, little hops, but just keep it bottom contact. To me, the most important thing is... This is just an old flipping stick, a big heavy action, something I'd fish bass with. This is actually a old all-star, 20-pound test. It's something you'd flip in the canes is perfect for this. Like you can use braid, it doesn't really matter. The next most important thing is when you feel a tap, and sometimes you'll feel these hard taps on these flounders, because you want to set the hook as hard as you can. Because what'll happen with a flounder, he'll grab it, and you reel him up next to the boat, and you don't have the hook. He bites it so hard, he doesn't have the hook in his mouth, and he just opens his mouth, and boom, it comes out. So many people lose fish right at the boat, even trying to net him. Most of the time, unless he's a gigantic one, I just bring him straight in and try to flip him in the boat as quick as I can get him in the boat. But just a heavy setup is what you need. 